Welcome to Roller Coaster with your host, Dr. White, where we talk about the ups, the downs, the twists and turns of life. Today with our special guest, Mark Ford, former lead guitarist for platinum selling recording artist, the Black Crows. Please keep, Please keep your, your hands, hands and arms inside, inside the car, car at all at times. times. And remember, remember, it's only once around the ride. All right, welcome to the show. Now, I'd just like to say up front that this excerpt of this interview with Mark was never intended to be a podcast, so the audio quality isn't quite ideal. However, we had a great conversation. Hopefully, you'll enjoy it. I know I did. So now let's just jump into the interview already in progress. So what's your favorite pedal? Um, favorite fuzz, if you have to break it down to three. Well, lately, I've been going through tons of them, and they're all, I love to have them for studio stuff because depending on what you need, this doesn't work with that amp so good, but this does. You know, they're different DQs and things. And you can hear the subtleties in a studio much better than live. Oh yeah, yeah. So if I had to grab one, it's that Sun Lion that I've had. It's fuzz and a booster in one. And Mike, he does pedals right. It says right on it. And yeah. He's a great dude. And Wawa pedal? Yeah. What's your favorite Wawa pedal? Well, it has been this old Italian crybaby that this guy gave me. Um, I had an old Italian Vox that I had went missing somewhere that I liked a lot. And now uh, Scott, BMF, his wad is pretty amazing, but it's heavy, so we gotta talk, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I got to sit once with Buddy Miles in a, at a festival. And he, you know, he loves to tell Jimmy stories. And Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. And then, and then he sat down, he went to plug into a twin. He just instinctually went straight to it and hit every knob to 10. And then you sit back and then you got it all right here. Yeah. And when you bang on a twin, it's just, there's authority there, you know. It's an intense ride. Like we were talking about the marshals, you know. Like it's a big sword to wield, you know. Like, like I'm talking about, like, all I knew was Judas Priest. Then I heard Band of Gypsies, and my whole world got 17 times bigger. You know what I mean? Like, wow, I didn't know you could do that. Well, I'm only now realizing that it's the best way to go. You know what I mean? I, What's the best way to go? Just a big, loud amp. <laughs> wide open you know it's just nothing really there's no pedal that can make that happen yeah and no pedal feels like that standing in front of it no because it's a full body experience <laughs> because it's obnoxious it hurts a little and causes you to choose people don't want to come over to your side of the stage <laughs> it's just you know it's a it's a lot so on, on the on that live dvd um, you did with the crows there's a lot of people that really love what you did on that. Can you talk a little bit about what that experience was like? Those well, shows? that was just another gig. I mean, you know, in a way, of course it was important, but we did four or five days there and just recorded that one Saturday night. Like, we didn't piece together four gigs to make a good one. It was just, that was the one night, you know. Yeah. It was a little strange because, you know, the house lights were up more so you could see the crowd right. more. You know, there was a little extra heat probably because, you know. The red light was on. You know that it's there, but other than that, it was just another gig because we were badass. Yeah. Yeah. It was an amazing band. Now, you were playing with Doug Roccaforte amps with no master volume. How was that? Loud. And so I'm sure. <laughs> it was loud. I'm sure everybody wants to know, you know, what pedals were you using during that show? Do you even remember? I don't know. It's always some kind of a fuzz pedal and some... Germanium pedal and a wall, kind of. That's a, just been always, you know. I started wanting to be Jimi Hendrix in a way. So the fuzz and the Fender guitar and the wall. Had, it's funny, I keep trying to get away from it and go somewhere else. And I find some things that are cool, but in a panic situation, my go-to is, you know, get a fuzz bass, you know. Use the knobs on your guitar. Turn everything up and go for it. It's very, it's a whole bizarre nether world. Well, speaking of, of Netherworld, uh, 
You ever uh, go another place when you're on stage? Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, All talk time. about that a little bit. Because you, you never hear anybody talk about that. That's the selfish part of music, I think, or any art, is when you've lost yourself into it and you disappear and the music is now taking over. It's an incredible experience. And sometimes you can, the hardest part is, is to realize it and watch it happen without blowing it. Because you can't touch it. You just watch it, you know? And as soon as you used to, you know, I go, ooh, that's great, you know, and then I'm playing and it's gone. It's a trip, it's fun. I think that's, that really is the, the, what we're all trying to get to. What do you call that? God, I, you know, I don't know. Behind the veil, who's out there, who, you know? There's other dimensions. This is stick drawing our world, so. I never really ever heard anybody talk about it. The first thing I ever heard about was in high school, some rock haters were saying, Richie Blackmore, Astro Projects, and floats out <laughs> over the audience. <laughs> you know, I mean, I never heard anybody saying, oh, when you're improvising, something can happen to where this other thing comes up and you erase yourself and you become one with the music and all this, I am music and all this well, cheesy, but, I, you, it, but yeah, it happens. It's true because... You know, it's from years and years and years and years and years of hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of that and literally does become part of you. And it, I think it's just this union of spirit and wood and, you know, I don't know what happens. You just, you've given yourself, you surrendered. <laughs> now, can you control it? No. That other thing? No way. You, you just, the only thing is you can do is get yourself in a position for it to happen. Now, how do you get yourself in a position for it to happen? Uh, uh, you know, I don't know. That's. Uh, yeah. Do you ever find that it happens when you're dirty? Oh, sure. Like, in spite of you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know who it was. One of those worship leader guys said he just wrote one of his biggest worship songs after he got done looking at a bunch of porno magazines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but isn't that the blues? Isn't that Psalms? Yeah. Like, oh man, I'm an idiot. Please right. help me. You know? And in spite of us, this, you know. That's the blues. Like, this sucks, man. You know? And then the other side is like, ooh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> the agony and the ecstasy. Yeah, but, I mean, Mississippi, John Hurd, and, and Fred McDowell, they did both. They didn't play anywhere, you know? He's a guitar player. He trying to hurt nobody. When is your album coming out? Uh, October 14th is the date right now. October 14th, do you have a title? title? Yeah, The Vulture. The Vulture. It's Mark Ford and the Neptune Blues Club, and the title is The Vulture. Yeah, I love it. So you're going to, you're going to go on yeah. a tour? Before recorded music, that's what you did. You traveled and played for people. Yeah. Like the circus. Are you a carny? <laughs> um, I'd probably like, yeah, there's some similarities. The gypsy lifestyle moving and it gets in you a little bit, you know, and you miss it. I guess like old seamen. You know, once you've been out to sea, it right. never leaves. And Don't want to hang out anywhere too long. All right. Keep yeah. moving. Yeah, you know, saving money on pedals. Pedals are fun to get back to that. Thing. Mm -hmm. I make myself crazy with them. And I always end up back to the one that I had so forever. And so tell us a little bit about this guitar. This is what Bill and I, Bill Asher and I put together. We just, I met him through Ben Harper and I love it. Yeah, let's hear a little bit of it. Okay. You just said, what if, what do you want to do? And it's, well, being, Amazing to put this Gibson Les Paul special and mash it in with this, this Stratocaster somehow. You know, it's fender length and mahogany and P90s and, and kind of the neck. It's Gibson spacing, so it's, it's pretty cool. I love it. All right, well, thanks for uh, stopping by. Watch out, whoa! Damn it. <laughs> hey, it's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I enjoyed that. I hope you did. Mark is currently playing with Magpie Salute. 
with former founding member of the Black Crows, Rich Robinson. Check him out on tour now. Remain in the ride until it comes to a full and complete stop at the unloading point. This is Dr. White. Remember, we don't ride alone. Thanks for listening.